Good afternoon. We're back. Well, he is. Um, we've dressed him up for the occasion as well. Um, the post has just arrived and brought a nice little parcel. And um, we're going to do one of those dreaded unpacking videos today. I've never done an unpacking video before and I never thought I ever would. But um, my missus came up with a wonderful idea. Let's do a quick unpacking video because our new microphones have arrived. Remember the last few weeks we've been talking about... Uh, different microphones for the channel, testing different microphones and uh, trying them out and I've had all sorts of advice and help from around the world, thank you for that, um, over the last weeks and um, it was actually quite difficult to find something that picked up the sound the way we wanted but also was affordable, if you know what I mean, yeah, and um, these little chaps here are definitely going to be the way forward, uh, more on that in a minute when we get round to unpacking them. Right, let's get inside the box. But before we do that, um, here, serial numbers. Look at that. Serial numbers are one after the other, yeah? It's, uh, there's an 83 and then an 84. What does that mean? Well, it means they were produced at exactly the same time. And it's, you know, microphone number one and then microphone number two. So, theoretically, they are exactly the same. And it says on the side, I don't have my reading glasses there, but it says, a pair of cardioid condenser microphones matched to within plus or minus 0.5 decibels. What does that mean? It means they are highly sensitive. It means they're exactly the same. So if they're picking, if you're using them in a stereo pattern, it means they're gonna pick up exactly the same levels of sound from both sides. Now, if you had a microphone that was produced, say, on a Wednesday, and another microphone that was produced two weeks later or something, they might have ever so slightly different response patterns, okay? That's just the way things are made, yeah? If you buy a car that was made on a Monday morning when people can't be bothered, it's probably gonna have more problems than a car that's made on a Friday afternoon when everyone's, dead, you know, dead happy and ready to go home again. You've all heard of the Monday made car syndrome. Well, I can't imagine it's the same in this world, but maybe it is. So, um, let's get inside and see what we've got. It's quite heavy, actually. I'm guessing it's a big wooden box inside. I know it's a wooden box because it said that. Very important, lifetime guarantee, which is rather good, so I have to do that online. And once we're inside, whoops, we have a product guide showing us all the different kinds of microphones they make. These ones are made in silver and black. I ordered the silver ones. Um, I just think they look nicer. British design, world class, so I'm being true to my roots. There's that, there's a little sticker. If I want to be a proud Sontronics owner, I can put that somewhere. And we even have a user guide, which I will look at later. Right, there it is, a rather lovely wooden box. Looks like a cigar box, really, doesn't it? Let's get rid of that. It's got a rather cute latch on it. And if we open it up, I'll open it up the other way around so you can see it first. Ta-da! Looks like something from a posh jewelers, isn't it? Look at that. Um, yeah, there we have the microphones. We have microphone holders for the microphone stand, which is something now oh, that's quite important as well. We have two sort of wind, wind, uh, wind protectors, as it were, There's something to keep them dry. And then there's this rather heavy, sturdy uh, stand or holder for on the stand. So you attach that to your microphone stand, and then the microphones themselves are put on this, and you can sort of adjust the distance. So if you're doing a stereo recording, uh, you can have different sort of ideas. You can have a stereo pattern where they are, where the microphones are placed like that. I'll show you that in a minute, or further apart like that. So on this sturdy piece of kit is what that's all about. And here are the microphones themselves. Cutely packed away. They're rather heavy, actually. They're heavier than I thought they would be. Um, that must be the uh, quality of what's inside, I would suppose. Right, let's have a closer look at these microphones, see what they've got to offer. Right, let's get one of these little chaps out of its little bag and see what it can do. So, like I've said probably about three or four times already, they're quite heavy actually, quite heavy duty. And uh, very, very attractive microphones, I think. They've got some very nice uh, patterns on them. And I particularly like the Sontronics logo, which I think is very sort of art deco, very 1930s. I rather like that. So two loudspeakers on the side and a kind of sort of supposedly an old-fashioned ribbon microphone in the middle. They do actually make ribbon microphones, and that was also an option for organ recordings, but ribbon microphones need a different kind of um, microphone preamp, and they can be very expensive, and we didn't want to go along that route. So, to the microphone itself. 
Um, yeah, well, there's the serial number on the back. There's our sort of microphone connection at the bottom. You can see it's got gold pins, which is rather, rather flashy. Um, and there are two switches on the microphone. Now, what do they do? We will never use these switches, by the way, and let me tell you why. First of all, uh, the first one, it says minus 10 and minus 20 dB, and you can swap between 0, minus 10 and minus 20. And what that does, if, you've, if you're recording uh, a very loud sound source, for example, a snare drum, and you've got the microphone right up close to the skin of the drum or something, and when you bang on that drum, there's a very strong sound source banging against the microphone, and that's going to, that's going to cause an awful overload of sound inside the microphone and inside your mixing system. So what you can do is you can sort of say to your microphone, let's cut 10 dB off that, or even 20 decibels off that, so you know, we've still got the power of that sound, but it's easier to manage. So that's what, that's, that's what that little switch is for. Now the other one is a rather clever little switch for studio purposes. We're never going to use it in churches, because what it does, it actually cuts off rumbly bass sounds. So you've got a linear sound at the top, which means it's taking up the whole uh, frequency spectrum from 20 hertz to 20,000 hertz, roughly. And you can then cut off a bit of bass at around 75 hertz or around 150 hertz. Now, we're not going to be doing that because we, the whole reason for getting these microphones is to really pick up the bass sounds of an organ in a church. And uh, for that, we also need to change these capsules. Now, I thought... I always thought that a, a cardioid capsule would have sort of some kind of little cuts in the side so that you can work out what's in front and what's behind and then the, sort of the electronics inside say, all right, everything you're picking up from here, you sort of damp that down and concentrate on what's happening in front. And those actually cutouts are in the microphone themselves. Now, I never thought that was going to be the case, but that is the case, so that's fine. Um, there is going to be a bit of a problem though because we're going to be switching these capsules quite a lot. And... Well, the cardioid capsule that's on at the moment looks exactly the same as the Omni capsule there. So I think we're going to have to work out a way of holding them or keeping them apart so we don't get them mixed up. So let's have a look at the capsules in a little more detail. Right then, let's get one of these little Omni capsules out of its box. Um, these have to be ordered separately and they also cost a little bit. They don't come as part of this package. They're separate. Um, there is another kind of capsule you can get as well, but that's not something we're going to need for our purposes. So I only ordered these and um, let's have a look. Ah, okay. I've just discovered there is a way of telling them apart, which is rather useful. So let me see if I can get into this silly little packet. <laughs> okay. So rather thankfully, there's a little symbol on the side of the capsule which tells us did I say capsule or capsule the whole time? Capsule, hopefully. I'm speaking German and English again. I'm confusing myself. So there we have our little capsule with its mark showing us that it's a circle and omni, which means basically, if you imagine, if you imagine a sort of sphere, a complete sphere around the head of this capsule when it's on the microphone, that's what it's going to pick up. So in other words, if I talk to the microphone that way, if I talk to it that way, if I talk to it that way, it's still going to pick up my voice as if nothing happened. And we will show you that in a future video. So if I now change the capsules, when I just did the German version of this, it was almost impossible to unscrew this thing. And I thought there was maybe a sort of fancy trick there, but it's just they were very, very, very tightly screwed on. So if I carefully remove this capsule, then I can pop on the Omni capsule, okay? I'm not going to bother doing that because I'm going to show you the difference between the two capsules. Now, I said before, here's our cardioid capsule, and it sort of picks up everything in front, and it sort of dampens out everything behind. So it needs to know what's behind and what's in front. So there's got to be some kind of, some kind of, sort of, um, some kind of way of doing that. The electronics have to know what to do. And I said there have to be some little holes in there. And here are the cuts in the microphone itself. And if you look down in there, you can sort of see there's a sort of a mesh all the way down there. So that's obviously going to work there. But how does the capsule know? And then, I just discovered as I took the capsule off, in the bottom of the capsule, we have a few holes. So that's obviously going to sort of, yeah, that's going to work out where the air pressure or the sound pressure is coming from, and the microphone knows what to pick up. Now, in the underside of the Omni capsule, there's absolutely nothing. Yeah? So there's your difference. So the Omni capsule is picking up everything around it, and this one is sort of damping out what's behind it. It's quite clever. Quite simple, but quite clever. So 
And that's the way that's going to work. Right, so let me get these back where they're supposed to be. I'll screw this one back on carefully. And it's actually a very good thread on there, so you're never going to get that out of, out of place. So, right, that's the unpacking so far. Now, a few of you are going to say, oh, brilliant, you've got new microphones, so, well, that's it. You don't need any more cash. And, well, of course, I would like to take this opportunity to thank everyone for what they've donated so far to the channel. Uh, and as usual, we have our three different uh, variations of support. There's the PayPal, there's, there's uh, Steady, and there's also the Patreon. Now, I'm going to let you into a little secret here. I didn't actually buy these microphones outright. I'm paying for them with monthly instalments. And they are quite expensive, and the cash wasn't 100% there. And I had the option of paying them off monthly, so I took that option. So for smaller monthly payments, I can have the pleasure of enjoying these microphones, and you as well, obviously. We're going to show them off at the next, uh, uh, in the next video, which we're going to record at the weekend, I think. And what we'll do, we'll go to the church, and we'll record with the new microphones as they are. We'll record with the new microphones with the Omni capsule on them. And then we'll record with my old microphones, and we'll sort of do a sort of a demonstration of all, all three possibilities and show you the difference in the sound. And it is actually quite amazing, the difference. So I hope you are ready for that. Now, how, does this, how do we carry on now? Because we've got our microphones. Well, <sighs> that's not the end of it. These microphones are brilliant for the job at the moment. If we're visiting little churches with little organs, for example, where I am, um, that's perfect. Yeah? Now, if we're going to visit, let's say, a large, a large cathedral, a really large cathedral, then two microphones aren't going to pick it up sensibly. We're going to need more. Okay? So, okay, you're going to say you've already got two other microphones. Yeah, but they're not suitable for the job, really. They will do the job, but they're not as suitable as they could be. So, um, we will be investing in further microphones as time goes on. So, please continue to support the channel. It's very, very kind of you that you're doing this. And... Um, this is proof that we're investing everything back into the channel now. So thank you for that. Um, so what's next? Well, I think possibly one of the next things we need is a decent, and you're going to laugh here because you're going to think, well, how can this be so difficult? But it is actually almost impossible. A decent microphone stand. Now, You've seen in other videos here, yeah? we've got a normal sort of studio stand and I hike it up to its highest possible level and then we stick it up on top of a table yeah, to try and get as close up to the pipe or the, the organ case as we possibly can to get a sort of direct sound. And um, well, that's fine if it's a little church, but in some of the places we've been already, it's almost impossible to get anywhere near the sound of the organ as it is. So, you, you know, we really need... A uh, microphone stand that's four or even five or even higher meters high, and these things are almost impossible to find. Have a look yourselves. Um, some studios have them, and there's a big professional weighted uh, microphone stands, and they cost thousands of euros. They're really expensive, so we're probably not going to be buying one of those because they're just as expensive as some of the microphones we were looking at. And that's, that's crazy, that's well without the budget. So I'm looking for a sort of used one. If, anyone's, if, if anyone out there knows of anything like that, then please do let me know. Um, or if you know of another solution, that would be good. Yeah, we're looking for a sturdy, solid microphone stand that can get up to four or five or even higher meters um, so that we can really get up close to the microphones. Uh, the microphones can get up close to the organ case, is what I'm trying to say. So that's one of the next things on our list. And then, as I said, we're going to sort of increase our battery of uh, microphones for larger installations and different purposes. Um, so, like I also said, we're going to show you this in our next video at the weekend, where we'll head back into the church and uh, record a few examples for you. And I've got a couple of other things I want to show you as well. So I hope you will join me again at the weekend. That's it for today. We've got to kind of rush now. We wanted to. We didn't think we were going to do this today, but they arrived and we thought, come on, let's do it. Let's do an unpacking video and talk about the microphones themselves. And yeah, we've actually got to head up to Cologne now, which is about 100 kilometers up the autobahn. Yeah, we have a, we have a, we have a, well, well, not a meeting, but we have a, we have an appointment in Cologne this afternoon, which we have to go to. So uh, a quick sort of run through our microphones before we go. I know I'm rambling a bit. I'm sorry. I'm quite excited that we've got this now. And uh, yeah, once again, thank you for your support. Um, I hope you look forward to our next video where you can actually hear what the microphones do. And I think we'll leave it there now. Off to Cologne. See you at the weekend. Bye-bye.